Hi hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. Um, thank you for tuning in. This is now part three of this uh, gorgeous little kit from Airfix. It's, um, it's going together really, really well. I hope you've watched part one and two uh, and enjoyed them. Part two was a little bit slower than part one, I'm afraid, but that's how things are when we start painting and, um, and I start giving tips and stuff because if I don't give the tips, people will ask and then I spend forever writing the tips. So it's easier just to make a longer video. And if you do find it boring, just fast forward. Um, so anyway, uh, we're all masked up now, ready to do the silver paint. So that's what we're doing in a minute. I've separated the parts over on here. We've got, this is all going to be silver. This is all staying green. This bulkhead here immediately behind the pilot seat. Not too sure if the back of it would have been silver or green. I'm going to leave it green. So if you know different, then please tell me. And if I don't, if I get the message in time, then I can always paint the back of it. I can always brush some, some silver on there. Now I've done a little bit of research on this because I wasn't sure if it was silver paint or if it was bare aluminium and apparently it's both. Um, early Spitfires were all green, apparently some were apple green and then Spitfires that were built to be shipped abroad uh, were probably all green so the aluminium was painted for protection but apparently some of the earlier Spitfires were actually painted with aluminium paint so they weren't bare aluminium they were actually silver paint and then I think it was I think I read something like February 43 or April 43 on it was bare aluminium now apparently early Mark 9s were different than all the others which that is also being contested because apparently Mark 9s were just Mark 5s with a bigger engine so there's lots and lots of stuff out there so basically what we're going to do with this model is paint the back half silver um, to depict aluminium, whether it be aluminium paint or bare aluminium, I do not know. So I've got a choice of paints here. By the way, I've done, got these control surfaces. I've gone around all the edges with Mr. Surfacer to fill in the gaps. There's quite a gap in this one on the back. You can see there. I think I'm going to have to put some um, super glue in there for speed. Otherwise, I'm never going to get them filled up. What we'll do is when it's dry, we'll gently sand those out and get the edges all squared up and everything. The actual, um, that's the wrong one. The actual fit is beautiful. They, they go together really, really nicely. I'm not sure if they intended to have them working at some point or other, but these are just glue on. I'm guessing you could drill through here and put some brass wire in there, which I may well do for strength. But, um... You know, you could actually put some brass around, you could bend them if you want to. I don't know, we'll have to see. I don't think you'd be able to get, the way they're telling you to build it, I don't think you'd be able to get them on if you use brass wire. But um, I think what they're telling you to do in the instructions, which I don't have to hand, is put these in and then fit the, um, then fit the uh, elevators afterwards, which obviously you wouldn't be able to do because, well, you probably could if you had a short piece of brass wire in there. But uh, we shall see. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I've also noticed I think we might have a bit of a fit issue here. You can see there's a bit of a gap on the top there and there's a bit of a gap underneath. So I don't know, maybe do a little bit of fettling to get it to fit nicer and see where we go. But um, it's nothing that Mr. Servicer can't sort for us. So anyway, um, all coming together lovely. Right, so silver paints. Um, I've got some choices here. Unfortunately, these are all pretty aggressive lacquer paints that absolutely stink so I'm not going to be doing any painting on camera this will all be done in the booth with the extractor if you want to go for an aluminium brushable paint I would highly recommend this one this is the Viejo aluminium paint or there is a range of colours here you can get which brush very very well indeed this one here the Mr Metal colour not super metallic the Mr Metal colour 218 Aluminium, it brushes beautifully and you can also polish it, but it is attacked by enamel thinner. So if you're putting washers on and stuff afterwards, you might want to give that one a miss. Um, this one here is the Super Metallic. I'm not sure how good it is at brushing. I've never tried it, but it does seem to airbrush very nicely. Um, and then we've got here the aluminium. This is this brushes beautifully uh, for small detail stuff. But unfortunately, because it's Viejo, it doesn't really stick to the surface very well. But if you've got a primer, you'll be absolutely fine. So that's something I would recommend if you're into your brush painting. Um, the Tamiya's, the X11 and your XF16 and all that, they're very, very, they've got very big particulates and they're very, very grainy paints. So when you paint them, they do tend to look, they're quite rough and they do tend to look quite grainy. So I prefer these. Now the Super Metallic is a very nice paint, Super Duralmin. It's going to be very, very shiny. 
very very nice um, but I, I've only got one jar of it I got this from Premium Hobbies and um, it was sent to me by Ed to try out I don't really want to in the inverted commas waste it in here because most of it isn't going to be seen so I'm not going to be using that one purely because I don't want to waste it these here are all lacquer paints these are all Tamiya lacquer paints and these are I think they're all the silvers they do um, LP11 is your basic silver paint and as you can see on the bottom of there it is just a basic silver paint LP48 sparkling silver very lot a lot of pig but you can see it's got a very high sparkle to it so you won't be using that one um, LP72 mica silver you can see that's got a grain in it as well but it's much finer so we may use that one this one here polished aluminium is lovely was well, gloss aluminium it's lovely it's actually aluminum I should say it's not aluminium it's aluminum as it says on there um, it's a lovely lovely paint and it does go down really really nicely uh, I have used it on what have I used it on I can't think now I have used it on some other stuff but um, so I've got my choice of three there so because we don't know if it's paint or aluminium that one's out because an aluminium paint wouldn't be that sparkly so we're down to these two here we've got the LP11 which is the basic silver and the LP70 which is gloss aluminium I can't make my mind up which one to go with so I may have a mix of the two I may do a bit of both and see how they look but whatever I do I will come back and show you after I've done it as I say I'm not going to spray this in here I'm in the room Jess is in here with me I'm not going to be spraying this stuff without having the booth on an instructor and everything because the booth I've got the bark sharp one is absolutely awesome when I spray with this you can't spray anything um, as long as you spray it in the booth if you sit outside the booth obviously you need to be right in there which is great with something this size when you've got something like a 30 second scale Lancaster wing it's very difficult to get in the booth which is why I'm going to be doing it outdoors when the weather allows so um, anyway so there we go so all this is all masked up I've used Tamiya 16mm masking tape up to the edge and then all the rest is covered with 40mm you may be wondering why I've covered it all up it's because silver is a swine as you will know, you get one little bit of overspray of silver. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So um, it's an absolute swine for doing that. So we'll get all this painted and then I'll come back and show you how it looks and I'll tell you what I've done. I may even use a combination of the two and do some blotching around and stuff. We shall see. But basically, I just don't want it to be bleh, silver. And one other thing I want to show you, if you remember, there was a great big ejector pin mark. there. You can just see a bit of a witness of it there this one you can't see at all just shows how good that super glue is there is a massive ejector pin mark under there and it's great it's done really really good in fact you can just see it on camera you can just see where the surface is slightly sunken where i've sanded it out but um yeah great it's much better than mr surfacer so never thought i'd say that they are two words that's a sentence that you never thought you'd hear me say much better than mr surfacer yeah Anyway, um, I'm going to go and do some painting, then I'll be back and we're done. So, basically, I did it with the LP70, was it? LP70 gloss aluminium. Um, yeah, and it was a little bit too bright and shiny, so I just went over it with a heavily thinned um, LP11, which is just the basic silver. And as you can see, we've got this basic silver look. So that could be aluminium or it could be aluminium paint. Once it's had a wash and stuff and we pick out all the details, I think it's going to look great and for what we can see of it it's absolutely fine um so we need to unmask it now and see how it looks we all love an unmasking don't we you know everybody loves an unmasking so there we are i've left that green bit there because i didn't want the edge of the door to be silver just in case i have that door open i haven't decided yet what i'm going to be doing which is why i haven't removed any plastic from the fuselage here which they ask you to do in the instructions, they give you a template to uh, to cut it with. So there we go, there's a nice sharp line in there, and then basically that bulkhead there, that bulkhead there is going to go in, sorry, in there, so you'll have green on one side, silver on the other, so that's how that's going to look. And then we've got our floor here. You can see that's all looking lovely again with the the paint going halfway into the join where the bulkhead is going to go and then we've got our side panels this is when having no nails becomes a pain in the arse i wish i could stop biting my nails anyway there we go so that's that done that's all good and then same on this one
and that's all good. So there we go. Looks like a little bit of the paint came off there. Look. So much for me saying about good paint adhesion. Uh, maybe there was some oil on this one. But, uh, not to worry. Not going to worry about that down in there. So um, there we go. And there's another couple of bits come off on there. Look. It's because I didn't detack the masking tape probably. But also I didn't wash the kit. Somebody did comment that I didn't wash it. And uh, I didn't wash it because I watched Les's factory tour and noted that the guy there said they don't use release agents. So I didn't bother washing it. And uh, maybe I should have. I know a lot of people that are, like Phil Flory. I don't think Phil Flory ever washes his kit. But um, there we go. So there we are. Maybe I should have washed this one. I'll remember it for the next one because I think there will be a next one because I want to do two versions. I want to do the American one and the, and the one with all the invasion stripes. So uh, I have to get another one, I think. Right, so there we go. So that's all looking good. You can see that when these side panels go in, you can see now we're starting to really look like a Spitfire. So detail painting after we've done the decals. Oh, the other thing I might talk about is the seat. I've got the seat masked up there. I've roughly masked the edges. I've been looking at some reference material of unrestored aircraft. And this one looks pretty much, you can see on there, this is from the, this is the book you get with the Tamiya kit. And you can see in there, get that out of the gloss, the edge of that seat is all chipped and everything. I don't know why they painted the sides of the seat green. But we can see in that one there as well. You can see how the edges of the seat, it's like it's been painted green, but the green is all chipped off where the pilot's been getting in and out. So I'm going to try and um, duplicate that. So as a basis, I'm just going to, I've got it masked up and I'm going to go in with this LP18 dull red. For the, which is basically for ship hulls. Um, I'm going to go in with that and uh, first as a base colour and then play with it and do the leather and everything. But I'm just going to give it a very thin base coat of that just to give it the base colour. Again, it's an LP paint. I won't be spraying it here, I'm afraid. So um, we will see you in a minute. And there we go. There's our seat all painted and you can see we've got a, an even edge. So I can work on that. I'm also going to be putting some washes in there and changing the colour of that. I'll also be painting that leather bit as well a different colour. Although they do tell you in the instructions to paint it all that leather brown colour. So, um, but the seat is definitely, it's like a Bakelite colour. I've been told, I've been informed it's not Bakelite. It's a, a sort of laminate material, uh, but it is the same sort of colour as Bakelite. So um, that's why I've gone for that bright red. So there we go. We've got our base colours down. I've got to paint these tanks again. Obviously I've sanded out those seams. There was a cough interlude. Um, so I've sanded out those seams and we've got the, um, oh, we haven't unmasked the battery, have we? We've got that bulkhead all painted up, or rib, rib or former, should I say. So let's get this battery unmasked so you can see how that looks. It's always a bit tricky taking mask and tape off in confined areas. There we go. Speed this video up. <laughs> In fact, if I talk really slowly and I double the speed of the video, you might I might sound normal. There we go. Right. I wonder how that came out. So uh, there we go. That's our battery. So that's going to sit in the back there, all the way back here. So basically, hardly to be seen, but I'm glad I opened up those holes because it adds a lot of interest to that area that you probably will be able to see when you look down in there. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> I'm ready now to do some decals, which it's late at night now. It's, uh, what is it, it's Saturday night. It's quite late. And um, I'm going to do some decaling in the morning, I think. So I think I'll let this paint go off a bit first because I've got a feeling there's something to go on the silver. But um, these LP paints do dry extremely fast, but I don't want to tempt fate. So I think we'll come back to this in the morning. So another thing I forgot to show you guys. There's the seat, yeah. I've given the belts a coat of LP16, I think it is deck tan. So you can see those thinned out belts, how they look now. There is no need to get aftermarket belts for this kit, I don't think, because they look, they look great on the seat. Obviously, again, that's the base colour. They're going to get some brown washes. We'll paint the brass eyelets. 
I'm not sure if they were brass or, or aluminium. I think they were brass. If you know in the comments, you let me know because there's a lot of Spitfire um, fanatics out there who know everything there is. But um, as I say, we're going to get some decals down and then we'll do some detail painting. And we're back. So next day now, got the decals cut off. Luckily, all the decals we need on this sheet in the instructions, all for our cockpit, all come on one strip across your uh, across your massive decal sheet. So or decal sheet. So we've got them all there, all right, nice and ready to go. We're going to be putting them all on except for this one here, which is number 27 for the doors, because I do not know yet which door I'm going to use. So we shall see. Um, but everything else we can do. So just to cover quickly what I said before in part two, you can see this has been gloss coated. It's nice and shiny. And again, you can see that massive sink mark in the middle there. Um, so that's all gloss coated and ready to go. Gloss coating helps the decals go down and it avoids the chance of silvering. If you're new to the hobby, silvering is where you get the carrier film. OK, now if I get you in the light here, these are actually, they're cartograph decals, so they're very, very good. But quite often, a rounder decal, you, you may just see it on here. A rounder decal, you will get a clear film, an edge. And cheaper decals, like for instance, on these white stencils on the end here for those tanks, you will see that the decal is just, it's got white writing, but you can see, if you catch it in the light, that it's basically one big piece of clear film. Now, as it happens, <laughs> these are the only parts where they're going, they're the only parts that haven't gloss coated. So we'll see how they go. Um, we'll see how they look. But basically... Silvering is when the you get air trapped underneath the clear film, the, the carrier film, and it appears as a silver blotch, and uh, it doesn't look very nice at all. Now I'm not going to worry about it too much on them because if it does, if it, if we do get silvering, I'll try something that gets rid, that helps helps get rid of it. We shall see how it goes. But um, this is the, the beauty of this. This is LP paint, and it's extremely smooth. The biggest problem comes when you're using Tamiya paints that tend to be quite grainy and you've sprayed them, you will get quite a rough finish, which is where you get your silvering problem. So it's worth bearing in mind and it's just worth just giving it a clear coat just to seal it all in. Um, and then we give it another clear coat to seal the decals in before we do any washes or anything. And the reason we do that is because if you don't seal the decals in, obviously if you think of this as like a sticker, think of it as like if I put a sticker on this mat now, like these are here, it has a raised edge. So when you do a wash, it will pick up on the edge of the decal. You don't want that. So you seal them in, which makes them almost like you've put a layer of glass over the sticker and then you have a flat surface to work with. So if that's too much for you, if you're new to the hobby and it's too much for you to take in, don't worry, we're gonna go through it step by step. So I'm gonna start on here with decal number one. And as you can see on here, what they've done, they've got very cleverly, you'll see why in a minute, You've got one to the right of the decal and then two to the left of the decal, then three to the right, four to the left, five to the right, six to the left. And that's really handy because what I don't want to do is put those numbers in my water. OK, so cut the decal off and leave the number behind, because generally what happens is the number. I grab my tweezers. Generally, what happens, the number is is like on there but it's not got any carrier film so it will just all fall apart and come off in the water and stick to your other decals and stuff so if you don't put the number in there so here I've got a tub of warm water you don't need to use warm water you've probably seen me before I just get a puddle and put it down here on the mat but because these are going down on here and we may have some edges to go down I've decided to use warm water because it helps the decals sit down easier so I'm just going to have a look at this one and see which way up it goes so that long bit there is the top so I know which way it's going to go on so I could just dip it in the water and then leave it down there these scissors are special scissors they're not special in any way other than I only ever use them they're from a knitting magazine obviously I got them off my mum um, but they're, I just use them for decals and nothing else you want nice sharp scissors for decals I've got a cotton bud here nice and clean and fresh and I've got a brush here and I've got micro set and micro sole and these are setting solutions and it just helps your decals to go down better so for example on this instrument panel where we've got the raised edges the the decals may be slightly larger so they need to pull down and go down nicely in we don't want them to sort of sit like a puddle in there so i'm going to take the lid off my micro set and then just grab a drop of micro set 
and put it into where this one's going which is here position one there we go and then I'm gonna pick up the deco with my tweezers and it should be ready to go Just use a brush oh and it's all turned and everything on the on the water so there we go I've got way too much water gone down on there so I'm just going to soak some of that up with a cotton bud clean off the brush and then position the decor and we can see that it's supposed to go with those two arms at the top so it forms like a Y so I'm just going to give it a turn around get it into position okay soak up some of the moisture I'm not pushing the decor down I'm just soaking up some of that moisture if you've got a great big puddle of water there, it doesn't help. Now, as for positioning them, you can use anything you like. I like to use something small like this because it helps to sort of dig in. And yeah, what we're seeing here, this decal is just, just a touch larger than the recess it's got to sit down in. And I've got this. I've not got this the correct way around. Hang on, let's go around a bit more. Go. I think that's right and then once you've got it roughly in position I'm just going to give it a bit of a gentle dab down and now it's finally in position give it a push roll the cotton bud over the top and then that's down in there and then what we do is grab another drop of micro set and just brush that over the top and just let that dry so that's number one done now the beauty of this is because they've got one on the right and one on the left I can now remove one and two together just like so and then I'm going to cut number two off making sure I don't cut into number three just dip it in the water and the other thing I'm going to do I'm going to get a bit of paper towel I've got a piece here that's got paint on it to soak up the water because as you saw just now I had an excess a great big puddle of water came off the paper onto the part and caused issues so decals scare a lot of people some decals scare me believe me and sometimes if you find they won't go down or whatever it's generally not your fault it's generally the decals hobby boss decals are a pain I find so we just put that on that paper and then just touch the edge of the paper with the, there we go, just get rid of all that excess puddle of water that's sat on there. Don't go over there, we go. Right, so grab another drop of micro set. And then number two is going in here. Okay, so we've got a drop of that in there. Grab our tweezers. And then slide the decal off the paper you can see how much easier it is to control that time because it didn't have that great big puddle of water there and then I'm just going to position oh yeah, that's bright isn't it bright orange just going to position that decal there in where we want it a very gentle tap with the cotton bud just to soak up any moisture and then do final positioning and then push it down in just like so there we go and I can see that it's slightly off so what I can do is just Rewet it. You can see that straight away it came off. And this is the beauty of cartograph decals. It's so nice that Airfix have gone to the expense. And I'm sure they're not the cheapest company out there, but they make the best quality decals that you can buy. Decals, decals. I call them decals. we 
there we go that's gone down in there as it ha this always happens with decals like this they're actually they're actually slightly larger than the circle you're trying to put them in which is always a pain because they they sort of sit up on the edges like this and they just roll around it's very difficult to get them to go down as soon as you touch it it moves there we go that's gone down now so I'll get another drop of my croissette over the top and just put that on let that sit and dry and that will pull down into that recess lovely now I'm going to go on and do this off camera because you don't want to watch me just do countless decals it's just ridiculous so I'm going to get these all done and then I'll come back and let you know how I got on and there we go all done you can see there's the instrument panel with the uh, all the dials on there so very very nice indeed it does look very nice the decal fit they are all just slightly larger than the recess they have to sit in so you have to work to get them in um, I do wish decal manufacturers would make them just a bit smaller or the same size so that they just plonk in and sit there but it's a bit like you know if you had a 20 if you had a 50 mil disc and you're trying to put it in a 49 mil hole and it just you know it just wants to rock around and not go all the way in so uh you need to use your setting solutions on here to make them pull down i think um a few other decals dotted around the place you can see those ones on the oxygen tank and you can see they're they're i've only just done them and they're still pulling down but uh, it looks like we're not going to get any silvering on there which is cool uh, but you can see the difference in the sheen you can see the difference in the sheen between the decal and the plast and the paint um but it, they did go down nicely one thing i would warn with these decals i found with the matte paint as soon as you put them down it's like they're stuck and you can't move them around whereas with the gloss paint you can move them around for ages so um that was another good point about having the gloss on there the number 27 i've actually taped it to the manual here because i'm not sure which one i'm going to use yet 28 i haven't fitted because that that uh, panel has got to be painted black first and also number 30 which is there goes on there i haven't fitted that one because that's going to be painted black as well so um basically that one there number 28 is going onto that panel there in the side of the cockpit and number 30 is going in onto there onto that knob on the side of there i don't want to do that but um i fitted every every one that i can basically before we do any detail painting weather or anything and then it's all going to be all done and nice so um yeah instrument panel lovely looking the look of that so all you do with your um with your gear you 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 put micro set down put your decal down on top of it blot it around and everything then put another drop of micro set on top which is the blue one let it dry and then come along with micro sole this one here and just literally get some micro sole on a, on a brush and just put a drop just put a drop on each deco it doesn't matter if you go all over the paint this stuff won't damage your paint be very careful some setting solutions like the Tamiya super strong will actually ruin your paint so be very careful so just put a drop on them like that just let it sit on there and it's, just let it do its thing and it will basically pull them down um, so you, you know you can get that sort of if, if you want to use the instrument panel with the dials on it you probably could and it will pull them down over the over the um, over the texture so uh, you can see on here I can put some more on there now just to make sure they go down nicely just brush it on make sure they're well covered and then just let it sit and dry do not touch them after you put the microsole on because the decor will have become very very soft almost like paint so uh, it'd be very easy to damage so just very gently brush it on and then leave it a uh, couple of issues one the decor here number 29 shows going on the side of this unit here um the decal is actually tiny you can see that there is about eight mil in diameter the decal is about five mil so what i did i cut it up and just use the um just use the stenciling off it so that's that done um and also then you've got the compass here number 33 which seems to be a little bit too small as well so that's sort of kind of lost down in there but we've got a clear part to go over it so it's not you're not going to see very much 
Um, and that was that. The other thing I've noticed, I'm right-handed, and I think these have been designed to be done by a right-handed person, because they sort of start over here and move over, which is really thoughtful, thank you very much. But if you're left-handed, I would reverse the count. So this goes up to number 26. Okay, so I'd go 26, 25, and work your way over if you're left-handed. So it just means you're not working over the decals all the time. So um, so that was pretty cool. And you can see those huge drops I put on there, they're practically dried out already. So uh, there you go. So that'll get them pulled down in nicely. So what we'll do is we'll give it a seal. We'll give everything that we've got a decal, we'll give it a seal of gloss coat. And then when we do the washes and that, we won't pick up on the edges. Where with these it wouldn't really matter, but like with these here, if I put a wash on there without actually sealing them in, I would get a black line around the edge of the decal. So we seal them in with a clear coat, job done. So uh, as I said earlier, a lot of people will say will say to you, it is not necessary to do a clear coat, um, a gloss coat for your decals, but it is just a bloody good insurance policy to make sure you don't get any silver in. And also, as I found with these, it allowed me to position them, whereas with them, I would just put them down. down. So... Uh, Glad I did glad I did the gloss coat. So um anyway, do a gloss coat, let that dry, seal them in, we'll let them dry, then we'll do a gloss coat to seal them in, and then um and then we'll start doing some detail painting. And there we go, as you can see, lots of the detailing painting has been done. Um I've added the decal onto this panel here, uh, because it tells you to it's gotta be black, so I, I painted it black and then put the decal on. What you will notice, you can see there's like this round piece in the centre and then there's some stenciling above and below the round piece in the centre. The way the decal's been made, it's been made kind of, you know, it's flat with the stenciling in the right position as you look at it flat. But of course, when you put it on the raised detail, it all pulls around. So my suggestion is with this decal, this one is number 28, I would suggest what you do is before you fit it, slice it off there and there and then the bottom and the top will be separate so and then you'll, you'll be able to put the text I managed to slice the top off I couldn't slice the bottom off oh yes I did sorry I didn't think I'd managed it so I've managed to get the text on the flat face but um if you just leave it as one piece it won't sort of it just pulls in because obviously it's going over this which shortens the distance um so I've done all the detail painting see we've got the brass here um, for this, I have used this paint here because the beauty of this is it's Mr. Metal Color 219 Brass. Um, it's, a met it's a metal paint. It brushes beautifully. You can polish it afterwards and bring it up. I'll show you. I can, I can bring this up and it will really, really shine. Just get a cotton bud on it and rub it and it will come up really, really shiny. As you can see there, it's got a definite sort of proper brass shine to it, and it's it's lovely paint. Um, the other advantage or disadvantage is attacked by enamel thinners, and obviously acrylic paint is not attacked by enamel thinners. So if you do like I did on here, I managed to get some onto the green. Just let it dry. Come along with a brush with a little drop of enamel thinners on it, and just brush around. And brush away the excess. You could do the same down here. I, mean, I had to do the same down there, should I say. So it's very, very good in that sense. The downside to that is, of course, if you're using washes and stuff, then it will dissolve that paint. But if you give it a, coat, a clear coat with acrylic, it will be absolutely fine. But you can see I've used it on here as well. I can come along here and polish all that, make that all stand out nice and shiny. And I've done the, the, the bases of the bulbs there with the brass as well and basically I've just painted everything as Airfix have called out now I don't know if it's all right or wrong or whatever but um, I've got my reference book here from the Tamiya kit and I'm looking at certain items and they don't quite agree with what Airfix is saying for example uh, this unit here um, this is this unit here you can see on there those pipes are actually painted green and it's all chipped so it doesn't look restored but they're painted all green this area down here is black and they're telling you to paint that green and this area down here is like a metallic so I've done that like a metallic uh, like a block so it's like an aluminium block or something 
Um, so I've done that with that. Um, but the Airfix instructions are telling you to paint this green. So I'm going to do a little bit of green on the brush just to show you how this stuff works. This is Modeler's World Acrylic Doctor and you hear people say all the time that Tamiya paint is a nightmare to brush and it is because it dries so fast. I always liken it to trying to um, paint an oily glass tile. It's just impossible. So I'm going to take this upturned Tamiya jar and I'm going to put some of this paint on here. Okay, we don't need much. And as I say, it's very difficult to brush paint. So with this acrylic doctor, what it does, it thins it. And it just makes it, we really want a little tiny drop on there. There we go, that's enough. What it'll do, it'll make it brushable. It just, it's like a retarder. And it works for pretty much everything. I think you can even thin stone res with it. I'll have to give it a go. But um, where's that part? So here we go. So it's, it's thinned it, so it might be quite thin. But as you can see, we can now brush the paint rather than have it all clumping up and ripping off on us. Just getting under there like so. I know a lot of you want to see me do detail painting. Um, but it's not really practical because I do it under a magnifier, which makes it really difficult. And also, you know, it's like, um, it, it's not very interesting, is it? So I'm ready now for a second coat already. Uh, it's not quite ready, it's lifting the first coat. But basically that's all we're going to do, and just let that dry and then give it another coat. And, um, and we'll have our green on there. And hopefully it'll be a slightly different shade. It's got the black underneath, but um, what I want to do is add a bit of interest. So I'm going to let that dry for a couple of minutes and then I'll give it another coat. Uh, what I should have done if it wasn't so lazy is mask it and spray it, but um, I'm lazy, so there we go. So basically we're ready. We're ready to start gluing things together. Um, what I am going to do is give it all a clear coat uh, because I don't want, I want it all sealed in. And then we'll let that dry and we'll start doing washes and stuff before we start putting it all together. The instrument panel has dried out nicely. You can see there those decos have all gone down. Lovely. So that's all going to look great. So what we'll do now, we'll give that a gloss coat to seal them in. And then we'll give it a flat coat or a semi-gloss coat or whatever. And then we'll pick out the dials and pick out some knobs and buttons and stuff. Um, but all of this I'm going to give it a clear coat just to seal it all in. I also did the, uh, I think they're brass. I'm sure you'll tell me if they're not, but I did the brass eyelets on the on the seat belts if you can make them out. So uh, they all look great now. But um, really happy that it's all coming out. So uh, I'll get another coat of that. I'll paint on that in a minute, and then I'll see you back after I've done all the gloss coat. And there we go, all gloss coated. And for that, I've used Alclad Aqua Gloss. Uh, it's basically a water-based um, clear lacquer. It's, it's brilliant stuff and the beauty you can put it over metallic paints and it doesn't affect them they still look as you can see they still look like a shiny brass so, and you can see on there as well so uh, that's the beauty of using that stuff and also it gives a, a nice sealing coat and you can put any enamel or acrylic or anything on top of it and it won't affect it um, say when I say acrylic I mean acrylic paint you can use enamel thinners and washes and stuff over it if you use acrylic thinners on it I think you probably damage it but um basically there we go so that's them all sealed in so I'm going to leave that now for a few hours to dry and then we can start looking at giving it a wash and some chipping and stuff like that but basically what we've done this is how I do things you may you may decide to do things differently but what I decide to do I, I get all the basic colors down so I've now got you know all my basic colors are there the, the knobs and the levers and everything's all colored and the put the piping's all colored and everything and everything's there with the right color in it and then what we can do now is come along with the you know get my wet palette which I got my wet palette here which was so kindly bought for me by Wendy thank you very much Wendy um, and we can mix up all sorts of watercolors and Viejo paints and everything and brush them around and start to highlight and you know because like you can see here everything is black okay we're going to change it around a bit we'll have a bit of dark gray we'll have a bit of a you know a bit of a greener black in there and a gray black like I'm going to paint the oxygen tube with a greeny greeny black color 
and um, it's just really adding lots and lots of different shades that just really make it all look busy and that's that's basically what I want to do um, you can also see I don't know if you can pick it out on here in the instructions they tell you that ring of bolts on there or rivets is bra or brass so um, I dry brush them with that paint and just dry brush over it and, uh, and, and get the, the brass rivets raised and then with a little bit of thinners in the middle because obviously when you dry brush it you get some paint in the middle just take it off so uh, yeah all, all very very good all very very nicely done and when we put a wash in we got all these rivet details in here it's all gonna really really pop and really look good so as I say I'm gonna leave that for a few hours to dry now so I may well look at doing something else I've done all the sanding of the joints on all the tail planes and everything so we've got our instructions here so we've done the We've done all the tail planes and everything. We, haven't, we obviously haven't fitted them yet because we've got the fuselage together. But what we can do is start looking at the wing and get these bits in the back. It looks like um, closing closers for the for the flaps. And then we got the main gear pieces going in there. Um, and then going over the page, this is where we're going to start using the the wing as a jig to build up our undercarriage base. So that could be interesting. So we might start looking at that. Right, so I've been busy getting some parts off the trees and cleaning them up and stuff. Um, <clears throat> clean up the sprue nibs. Be very careful, we've got these tiny little um, additions on here. Got those three on each side there. There's also a tiny little nub down there and I've accidentally sanded it off thinking it was a sprue nib and it wasn't. So um, there's a sprue nib here. There's one here, you've got one on the end, just be careful, that, that's not a sprue to that little lump down there, so I'll probably have to do a little bit of fill in there, so but never mind. Um, but basically gone round, sanded all the sprue nibs away, and then we'll see what all the enclosures look like afterwards. In fact, I'm just looking here now, there's a bit of a, a mould seam on there, I'm going to scrape that out rather than sand it. It's just a very small step. Just get rid of that in there, you can see. There we go. Yeah, we have got a bit of a mould seam there. We'll see what it looks like when we get the ailerons in, but um, I don't want to be removing too much plastic, but uh, we'll see how it looks. Right, so that's that taken care of. So all the sprue nibs are gone, then I've got these two pieces here, I've got these F30 and F60 are going to go in here, but first we're going to remove this. So remove the area highlighted in the green from the lower wing B1 starboard side only. So that's the right hand side, so that's this one here, so we're going to basically just get our sprue cutters and just cut that off and then sand it flat. Now a little tip for the newer modelers out there, if you want to make sure you're keeping your area flat, if you put some pencil, don't use a magic marker because if you leave any behind it will come through, we've talked about that a million times, and just sand away with a hard stick until you see your pencil lines start to fade or disappear or whatever looks like we've got the block at the back there which is causing us some issues as well so we can sand that off this is obviously for a another edition there's going to be loads of versions of this Spitfire coming out I think from Airfix I mean we know we're going to get a 14 or a 16 because we've seen the rudder um, we're going to get a PR version because we've got these camera holes there. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be a lot of these coming out. So it's going to be nice. I'm looking forward to the um, the 14 or the 16 with the bubble canopy. Right. So uh, we're going to get these. We've done that. So we will get these glued in. So we've got to identify which is which. And I didn't number them as I took them off, but you can see here they've got a step on the back side. So that one there is 30, and that is going to fit. So we've got a cutout. It's showing a, oh, there's a cutout there, I see. 
So that is going to fit into that groove. There is a groove in the wing. Right, that fits beautifully. There is a groove in the wing here. You can just make it out. And then there's like a, a raised step on the bottom there, which I've got full of sanding dust. So I'll get rid of that. So that's just going to go in there like so. And we've got a cutout in the part that goes over those two little lugs there. So that's going to go in there like that. I've got a little piece of flash in there which I just want to get out. So I think what I'm going to do here is clamp this in place. So I'll get some clothes pegs on it. Clamp it in place and then glue it and then we won't get glue oozing out all over the place. I doubt that it matters very much to be honest. You know, that inner end needs to be clamped. I don't know how quite how we're going to get into that. Can we get through that hole there? No. Can we get over there? Yes. The pegs will just reach. I've got the, the cut out in the peg going over that piece there. But as you can see, it's pulling it over on an angle. Another peg on there. Sorry guys, I should have been prepared for this with pegs at the ready. Rather than have you listening to me rattle around. And they've got a little bit of riveting detail there, obviously, for when the gun bay is left open. See it on that one there. There's a little bit of riveting detail on there. So that's a little, nice little touch. So we've got that in place. So we're going to grab our extra thin. Just run some under there. Run some under there. That peg isn't actually doing anything. Be careful not to touch the pegs because it will capillary around. Just run some under there. That should be enough to hold that in place. Just put a little bit more at this end. There we go. So that's going to fix that trailing edge of that wing. A bit more solid. Glad they didn't mold that in because you can you guarantee if they'd have molded that in we would have ended up with sink, a great big sink light across the back there. So then this one's going to go in exactly the same. Have some close pegs, make a load of noise again. So clamp that one down there. Up there. Grab another clothes peg and go over the back there. That's cool, that holds that down so that can go on there. Be careful it doesn't try and twist it over at an angle. Just check we got a nice it's touching all the way down so we can just come in with our cement and cement this in. There we go. And there we are, that's that done. So we'll leave that to dry and then uh, come back. I seem to be in the realms of leaving other, everything to dry again, don't I? Right, so moving on in the instructions, we've now got the main spar here and it's telling us to put these two little pieces in. These are locations for the undercarriage legs. Um, so they're going to go in there so we can see we've got the spar this way around with those two lumps poking back at us okay and then we've got these parts here which are all cleaned up so that one is E2 you can see it's by the picture it's lower down and the cutout is facing inwards so that one's going to go into there just like so feels like a bit of a tight fit I guess you want but I want to make sure that it's gone right in it feels like it's not going right in let me just um clean up that edge a bit feels like something's holding it off 
that's better. Right. So I'm just going to put some cement around that. Let that wick in. Obviously this needs to be a nice strong joint because this is where the undercarriage leg is going to go. We can put that down. Use the sanding stick and give it a good push. That's gone in nicely. And then we can grab the other one. That one's got exactly the same. So again, I'm going to take off a little bit of flash from there and just scrape down a little bit of plastic from in there. There we go. That's gone in nice and solid there. So that's those two in. So we've done that. So we can grab our pencil and we can cross those out, cross those out, cross those out, cross that out, cross that out. So they're telling us here this needs to be painted silver. I'm not going to do that now. We'll do it all when it's glued into the bottom wing. Because all this is structural, we want nice strong joints. So the last thing we want to do is start introducing paint. And you can see there it's showing us how it should look and that's the way it looks. So uh, happy with how that's gone in. That's all nice and strong. So over the page. And now it's telling us we need to be working with our wing. So I can get these parts off and... Uh, get them cleaned up, ready to go. But I really want to let this go absolutely solid before we do anything else. So we can see here we've got the we've got a rib there, F33. That's going to go in. And what it's telling us to do is put all this down in here without any glue. And then what we're going to do is make up the wheel base. In fact, I could go on and make up the wheel base, couldn't I? Now I don't want to do that because I want everything in place so I can make this up while the glue's still soft. Put it in and make sure it's all manipulated. And fitting correctly. What they're telling us here is not to glue it to that spar but to glue it to this piece here, this piece here F59. Don't glue it. So they're saying don't glue the spar to the wing. Don't glue this in at all. So don't glue that to the wing or the spar. Don't glue this to the to the rib. Don't glue this rib to the spar. So I'm assuming we're going to glue everything and then we're going to repeat on the other side and then we're going to go around once this is all in and add glue to glue everything in so it's kind of it's a bit of a strange build sequence here and also we've got that hook which is going to come down through the wing so we're going to have something sticking out the bottom of the wing as well which is going to be a bit of a pain but um i think what we'll do is get the parts off the tree get them all cleaned up do a dry fit and see how it all looks Okay, so we'll get one of these undercarriage bays together and then we'll call it a day, I think. So the telling you here is step 58 to glue these parts together, which I'm going to do now, but only with a small amount of cement. So we have this part here, which is F40. Now this is beautifully engineered, so you can't really go wrong. The tabs are made in such a way that they can't go in the wrong way around and you can't use the front in the back and things. So... That's really, really nice. And then obviously this piece here is going to go in and form up the full circle. Now, I've noticed that what we've got here, when we assemble this, we have a seam to deal with, two seams to deal with. So we're going to deal with them. But what I'm going to do is just put some cement on there and glue that in place. Okay, and then I'm going to put some cement on here. And glue that in place and then put this into this rib without any glue okay and as you can see we've got get this back in here again we've got lots of movement like, like this so Basically we need to get it in the wing and use the wing as a template 
to let these three parts dry in the correct orientation. So I'm going to grab my wing here, which is still all pegged up. We're only about 10 minutes away from where I last spoke to you. So that's going to go in there like so. This is going to prove rather difficult, I think. Let's see how this spar goes, first of all. OK, that spar is going to go over here. No, that spar is going to go in there. Right. Or rib, should I say, not spar. So that lot is going to drop in there. Like so. In fact, if we rest the spar in place, and the spar goes with those two lumps facing backwards, so okay, we want the this rib here, which is F thirty three. That's going to go over there like that. That's going to go through that hole in the wing, like so. And that's going to sit like that outside there, right? So that's the that's the main sparring position. I'm going to get a peg on there and just hold that in place. Okay, so that's that in place. This is like peg city, isn't it? I think I'll get another peg on the other end and then we will put that spar in there trying to keep it all together like so and force that wheel bay down into the recess that's in the wing and there we go and now that can dry what I'm going to do is just put a drop of cement in the top, not enough that it capillaries all the way down because we don't want it glued to the wing. And that can sit there and dry in the right position. My voice is going again, I think. It's actually not in the right position because that spar needs to go over, that rib needs to go over. That needs to jump. Oh, did you hear that clip down in there then? It's very positive. It fits beautifully. So if you have issues, you've done something wrong. That fits in there. Absolutely gorgeous. We've got the, the rib is in the spar. It's touching the wing. The wheel bay is in the wing, in the recess. Touching all the way around. It's, it's really, really nice. It's going together like a dream, this thing. And... As we can see, that's all really lovely. And when we look from underneath, it all looks lovely. If anything, that one needs to go back a touch. Something is stopping that going over tight to that. And I can't see what it is. We can see when we look underneath, we can just see the edge of the wheelbase sticking out. And it's like it wants to go that way, but it will not go. And I don't know what is actually holding it off. Okay, I can see what's holding it off. So let's take it out. It's this area here, so I'm going to, with a round blade, I'm just going to remove some plastic from here. This plastic is a joy to work with. It's not really soft like the, the Airfix plastic that we know of old. But it's, um, it's very much like the border model stuff. And we all know what I think of the border model plastic. It's very, very nice indeed. So I'm just going to remove some material from there. You could actually remove some material from here, but I don't want to go sanding it and everything. Let's just see how it goes now. So we've got that in there, that in there, 
there we go I can push it right over now so that's perfect I am actually going to remove some plastic from here so I'm going to hold that piece just remove plastic from the back of here to allow that to slide back over further put that spot that rib back in that pegs falling off this is the trouble of everything being pegged together it all wants to fall apart here we go that's better yes there we go got that nice and flush around the edge now all the way around nice and flush so uh, there we go so I'll leave that there to dry so that those three circular parts dry in the right shape in fact I'm going to get another peg on here and hold this rib down because it's decided it wants to keep popping out There we go. And I think I'm going to get one of my big clamps and hold that down. There we are. That's all nice now. So everything's good. Everything's nice and square. And that can sit there and dry. Because all I'm worried about is those three parts there. That's all I'm concerned about. So I'll do the other side off camera. You don't need to see me do that again. And... Um, and then I'll be back for part four. So thank you for watching. Uh, this thing's coming together really quickly. I'll just show you quickly off camera. I sanded away the um, the Mr. Surfacer on the edges and we got a nice, nice square edges and everything now. And then that one is the wrong side. There we go. And you can see these are going to fit together beautifully like that. And look really, really nice on the back end. So, um, Everything's all looking good. It's all coming together beautifully and I've lost the other tail plane. It must be here in the box somewhere. There it is. Hiding. So uh, the box is getting emptied out actually quite fast. So that's all those bits there, all cleaned up, all ready to go. Sanded round there, sanded those and straight in there. Feathered out the edges. So we'll see how that all looks when it's all primed and everything. But uh, as for this, I'm going to leave that to dry, let those bits go really solid. And then with that wheel bay in like that, we're looking good. So um, thank you for watching. And as I say, I'll see you all back for part four. That's been about an hour. So I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Bye for now.